We live in a world now where you can click on anything, whether that's a link to a website or to download a PDF or to view a DNA sequence or play some music. What CTAF Stable Identifiers do is add the ability to click on a link and gain access to a specimen in a natural history collection. There's nothing special about these unique identifiers for herbarium specimens. They're just basic web URIs, so that's uniform resource identifiers that we're all familiar with. We see them in the address bar of our internet browsers all the time. What we've added on is uh, institutional commitment to maintain them as stable identifiers so that we have one unique link for each specimen within a collection and the institution commits to keeping that link working. So it's just another addition to looking after the specimen. Look after that URI to that specimen. The great thing about URIs is that the domain name part can uniquely identify an institution on a global level. Then the path part that comes after the domain name can uniquely identify a specimen within a collection of an institution. So in combination, we have a unique addressing system that we can refer to specific specimens anywhere in the world. As well as providing a link that you can click on, stable identifiers allow us to link between different types of data. This means that a DNA sequence or a dot on a map can be linked back to the associated voucher specimen. And voucher specimens can be linked to duplicates within other collections. It also means that we can attach data to specimens because we have a unique identifier to embed within databases. Most research projects use material from more than one natural history collection because a researcher will be looking at a taxonomic group or a geographical area and the specimens will be housed in multiple places. If we want to build tools to help those researchers access data about those specimens, and view them uh, next to each other, we need a unified way of accessing that data and the images associated with the specimens. The CTAF stable identifiers give us this basic level of commonality across multiple natural history collections. We first used stable URIs to refer to our specimens at the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh in 2010 and published a paper that used them in 2012. At about the same time, Berlin Botanic Garden were trying to solve the same problem in the same way. And so we joined forces through CTAF, the Consortium of European Taxonomic Facilities, with some other institutions so that we could all adopt a similar approach and standardise what we were doing. We now have more than a dozen institutions who've implemented these stable identifiers. For an institution to get started with stable identifiers is really quite simple, especially if they already have a portal where they publish their specimens online. It could be as simple as adding a new rule to the web server configuration, or perhaps adding another template file to their portal. It's also possible to take an incremental approach to implementation. At level one, you can simply provide a standard URI that resolves to a web page for the specimen. You can then move on to implementing content negotiation so that human will receive a link to the web page or a machine will receive data in RDF format. Beyond that, at level three, you can commit to returning certain types of data within that RDF data stream. If you want to get started with implementing stable identifiers, there's lots of help available. There's some documentation online from CTAF that you can go and read and show to your technical people. This is a, a growing community and we are tending to help each other out, so uh, you may well find that there's an institution near you or someone you know who can help you do the implementation. There's also an online testing tool uh, where when you start to do your implementation, you can check that your your eyes are functioning correctly and that tools that are built against them will work correctly. We're still at the level where we're codifying how we do this as a group. This means that if you have particular requirements, it may well be that you can influence how everybody else is implementing them. And we'd really like to hear from you. It's exciting to think about what is becoming possible. 
As we reach a critical mass of collections who have implemented these identifiers, we will be able to build really useful indices so that we could have, say, portals of dinosaurs or a portal for a country or, or a continent where a user could browse specimens from multiple collections that apply to the same area or to the same theme. Imagine a thematic portal just for one area of Africa or for Nepal, or perhaps for a particular genus or family of organisms. We can also build a unified annotation system so that you can write notes on specimens from multiple collections and share those back to the collections. In the future, we can envisage side-by-side -side browsing of high-resolution images from multiple institutions within a single application. An early example of the use of stable identifiers is the Wallet catalogue. This is a recreation of a historic herbarium whose specimens have been spread across multiple contemporary collections. It's particularly important for nomenclature and it means that we can find duplicates of type specimens that we didn't know exist all through a single interface. If you'd like to increase the usage of your specimens, adoption of stable identifiers is a simple, effective way to help achieve this.